you know, every one of us in that series had been somehow touched forever by the phenomenon of, of Nightmare on Elm Street, you know. Um, Robert England was always known as Freddy, and uh, Nancy, uh, Heather and Nancy were inextricable. New Line Cinema had sort of been built on it. So um, when I came away from that conversation, I, I called up Bob Shea and I said, you know, I think I want to make a movie about the phenomenon of the movie and use that as the basis and jump outside the stories entirely and also try to deal with this whole idea of censorship and whether uh, horror films are good or bad or whether they cause people to do things. Um, because that, that has been uh, sort of a growing and insistent question continuously asked of me and I think everybody else making horror films is, aren't you afraid your films cause this or that? And my, my sense was, again, look, going all the way back to Greek mythology, is there's a lot of great literature that is about horror and that somehow a story about horror, uh, in a sense, exercises it or gives it a form. It's, it's the same as Nancy dragging the hat out of her dream. It, it's the beginning of being able to come to terms with it. And that if you were to prevent these stories, you would, in a sense, be allowing something that is ineffable to sort of travel unimpeded through our consciousness because it would not have a name, it would not have a shape given to it so that in any sense we could recognize it. So that became the essence of it, you know, stopping the stories of Freddy has really allowed Freddy to cross over into real life. And it was kind of a, a subtle warning to the censors on my part to say, you know, back off unless you want to experience the real thing rather than seeing it in cinema, you know. Uh, and it also seemed to be the freshest, freshest way to approach the uh, kind of the 10th year anniversary of the genre, which it, in fact that was almost Almost to the month, it was the 10th year of uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street.